So at first let's delete everything and create a mesh UV sphere on which we will apply the whole material. Now in order to get a bit smoother geometry we can also add a subdivision surface modifier and right click shade smooth. Now we can directly drag in a new viewport, change it to shader editor and add a new material. We can delete this principled BSDF and create a glass shader right away. Now let's go into the render preview and make sure that you are in the cycles rendering engine, not Eevee, because we are gonna be working with volumes and those look much much better in cycles. So just keep that in mind. And now let's also add some simple background, so a mesh plane is enough. Also make it much much bigger and extrude those three edges so that we have sort of an open box of an environment. We can also give it some simple material and because it is a background, a simple diffuse shader is gonna be more than enough. Let's go for some darkish blue color because we will try to create a fire in a sphere and blue just contrasts with fire quite nicely. And now we can already preview our glass shader and as you can see it's working but it's not much right now. So we can also add a mesh plane which is gonna act as a light source. Because we are in the cycles engine we can just create new material and make it emiss emissive and then the strength of the emissive material acts as sort of a light intensity. So with that done let's move to the actual part of the tutorial. In here you can see that we have a surface input which is the glass but you also have this volume input and for that we will need a principled volume, plug that in here and also create a noise texture. Now we can plug this noise texture directly into the density and also the emission strength of the principled volume and with the noise texture selected Control T to get mapping and texture coordinates. If this Control T shortcut doesn't work for you make sure that you have a node wrangler enabled in edit preferences add-ons. Very useful add-on by the way. And then the texture coordinates make sure that it comes from the object. Now as you can see we have this ball with sort of a white a mist inside but we can't see much so let's add a color ramp in order to increase the contrast of our noise texture so let's bring those values in together like so and we can see already that our noise is is working we have some volume inside but in order to make it look more like flame more like fire we need to make few adjustments so first of all let's duplicate this noise texture and plug it right after so that the factor of the first noise texture goes into the vector of the second and that already gives us this really really distorted effect but also way too small so first of all let's change the scale to like 1 and 1.5 the second thing is in the first noise texture let's bump up the detail all the way up and also add a small distortion to both of them like 0.7 i found works perfectly and then also the detail of the second noise texture bring in to 5 and the roughness all the way up to 1. Those are just the values that I came up with when I was working on this effect, but feel free to experiment and, and even you can change the first input from noise texture, you can, I don't know, use Voronoi or whatever, but I will use this for now in the tutorial. So now that we have already this noisy volume inside our sphere, it's time to make it a little bit more interesting, and because as I said, we are going now for the fiery look, we want the middle to be much brighter than the outside. So for that let's get a vector math node, and then plug it directly from texture coordinates object, and change it from add to length. Now what this does is it gives us a mass coming from the middle of the object, to the edge and that is a gradient from 0 to 1 which we can use to our advantage by simply flipping it and making the middle brighter than the outsides. So there's a few ways to do that. We will add a math node, plug it like so, change it from add to multiply and then we can duplicate it, plug it right after and then the second one is gonna be power. Keep all of the values at 1 so that we have a neutral result from this and add a mix RGB node in order to mix this mask with the result that we have so far. Change the mix to multiply and then plug the noise that we have right now into the first input and then the mask into the second input. The result goes directly into the density and the emission strength. As you can see nothing happened because we have those values as neutral so now it's time to adjust it and most important takeaway from this is this power has to be on the minus side. Make it minus one you can see that now the middle is brighter than the outsides. If you want to emphasize this effect even more, then you can bump up the factor in the multiply, as well as decrease the power exponent even lower below zero. zero. And then when everything is blown out, you can just increase this multiply in order to control how much of an area is being affected. So again, it's a place for you to adjust and experiment with the values. I will keep it at something like this, nothing too crazy. 
And also I will lower the multiply from 1 to like 0.5 because I want only a slight change between the middle and the sides and also I can always adjust it later along the way. So now with this out of the way, the second thing is masking of the outside so that the noise is not getting all the way up to the edge of our ball because right now if you look at it, it looks uh, rather flat and if we'll be able to mask the area closer to the surface of the sphere, it will look more as if the volume is actually inside the ball. So we will actually use the very same setup. We can just copy those three nodes and again plug texture coordinates object to length reset those values to 1 again so we have neutral and then copy this mix RGB but this time it's not gonna be multiply but subtract and what we want to subtract is from the main pattern so this one we want to subtract only the mask that is close to the to the surface and then the result again goes into the density as well as the emission strength you can already see something happening we can also bump the subtract all the way up because we don't want anything on the areas where we are subtracting things and it already starts looking nice but we can further adjust that by changing this multiply value in order to change how much of an area is being um, deleted or masked rather and then this power is controlling the contrast between masked and unmasked area so like if i go to the extreme values you see that we have just just this small ball of an area so i will keep it quite low very very soft just to make sure that none of the values are touching the surface. And a small thing to keep in mind, because as you know, we are using this glass BSDF uh, to control the surface. And the glass has something called index of refraction, which is basically telling the light how to refract while passing through the object. But it also affects how we see the volume inside. So as we change this index of refraction, you can see that the distance of the volume to the edge is changing as well. So make sure that you change those uh, two things in tandem to make sure that you have a desired effect. So I like to keep it at might be 1.2 and then I have to further adjust this subtract something like this maybe. So it just barely never touches the edge. And now it's time to put in some colors. So for that we will use a color ramp obviously. We'll connect it from the subtract and then the result of the color ramp goes into the volume color as well as the emission color so again because of the fiery look we're going for some orangey stuff and then the second one is gonna be kind of even reddish or so let's clean up the graph a little bit and add another math node this time it goes right here right before the emission strength and change it from add to multiply and this is gonna control how bright how emissive our light bulb is gonna be i'll set it to 30 at first and then we'll see whether it needs further adjustments later so it all looks nice already we can further adjust this color ramp in here that is controlling the overall noise and maybe change the interpolation to B spline so that we have a quite softer um, noise. Maybe something like this. Yeah, I like this much more. But then again, we have to adjust the masking a little bit. Yeah, I like this a little bit better. And now because it's fire, obviously we need to animate it somehow. So first of all, noise texture number one, change it from 3D to 4D. So that we have this w seed value sort of so you can see as we change the w value this noise is getting altered but another cool thing that we can also do is change the rotation z so that those flames is gonna just rotate on the z axis uh, around inside the cube so let's do that right now we can just put a hashtag frame divided by 120 which is gonna create a driver that is gonna alter the value based on the frame of the animation that is currently in. So if we hit play, okay, it's going too slow right now. So let's change it to something like 60. You can see that the noise is now rotating inside the ball. So let's also add another driver in this noise texture W value. And with both those values being altered, I think this gives off a really, really nice effect. But also you can see as we zoom in, uh, I don't know if it's very visible right now, but we have this sort of glaring uh, reddish ball in the middle and maybe some of you don't want that and are wondering how to get rid of it so simply in this color ramp that's going after the noise textures change the interpolation from bliss spline to something maybe linear and that is gonna make this contrast harsher and in turn uh, remove that that glaring ball in the middle so for the volume that would be it you can as i said before adjust those and change it manipulate those values however you want but now i will move into the glass shader 
in order to get those diagonal lines just flowing through the curvature of the ball. So let's add a noise texture. And then you can see in this glass BSDF, we have this roughness value, which is controlling how rough the surface is, so how blurry um, it will be. And we can use this noise texture in order to create a mask that's gonna drive it. So with this noise texture selected, Control T again to have texture coordinates and mapping. Again, texture coordinates object. That's what we are going to be using. But this time we want to have a custom object because if we preview the noise texture, we can see that we have this um, sort of blurry pattern. We can even add a color ramp to increase the contrast, but we want to have sort of directional flattened shapes. And even if we change the scale on one axis and then try to rotate it, you can see we don't really have an option to rotate it uh, diagonally so that it will move from here to here. And for that, we will create another object. This time it's gonna be empty, plane axis is fine. And then with the sphere selected, go into this texture coordinates object, click this eyedrop button, and then select the empty that you just created. And that is gonna map the texture, the noise texture, based on this empty location and also scale. So if we scale it on this Y axis, or whichever axis uh, works for you, I don't know how your world is oriented there. You can see that the pattern is scaling as well. And at the same time, we can rotate this empty and that is also changing the alignment of the pattern. So let's leave it like that. And then inside of the shader in this mapping node, we can move it on the X location. And that is going to allow us to scroll with this noise through our sphere. So again, let's add a hashtag frame divided by, let's say 80. Oh, that's way too slow. So maybe 30. And also because it's going down and we want this to go up, let's add a minus before frame and also set the scale on all axis to one. So we only control the scale through the empty itself. So I will scale it a little bit more. And then to adjust how much of the pattern I see, I just go to this color ramp and increase the contrast. Maybe the roughness a little bit as well. This seems all right. And now this I can directly plug into the glass BSDF roughness. And as we preview this, you may not be able to see this straight up because it only changes the roughness of our sphere. You can see it right here when the light is hitting the curvature. So in order to emphasize it even more so, we can duplicate this color ramp and then connect it like so. Change the interpolation to constant and now this black value is gonna be... Or actually let me plug this in so that you can see what I'm talking about. So it goes directly into color and now as you can see the black is the areas that will not be affected by the roughness. So we can go and change it to white. So the color is neutral basically. And then the second input is all the areas that have different roughness. So we can also make it a little bit darker so that even when we look straight up onto the sphere, we can still see them sort of. And yeah, now we can adjust our light because I feel like it's way too strong. Maybe something like this. We can check out how it's gonna look in the camera. So let's frame it in. Also make sure to go to the render settings, volumes, and change the step rate render to the smallest value possible so that the volumetrics inside of the sphere will have the best quality possible. And yeah, that is the effect after 10 seconds render. So I think it's pretty cool so far. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something. Or if not, then at least it was fun for you. And as always, if you feel lazy or you don't have time or you just want to have the effect without following the tutorial, there is an option for that. You can check the description. There is a link for my Gumroad uh, to get it there. And at the same time, if you manage to do something out of this tutorial, create your own effect or even uh, recreate whatever we did right here, then make sure to share with me on my Twitter. Link for that is in the description as well. And for the last week's submissions of really, really amazing work, I would like to highlight Guillermo Ciozza, I hope I read this correctly, who recreated um, his version of the flying cape uh, using custom model. And also the cape is uh, glowing and we have this really, really cool uh, distortion uh, going on. I mean, really, really amazing result. I was super impressed when I've seen it. Great job. Second one I want to talk about is Arsham, Gamer Channel. Um, Arsham has been in this with this channel for like, I think since the beginning. So really great job. You finally did it. Um, it looks simple. But I really like it. It's very kind of light in its simplicity. So great job, Arsham. Keep it coming. Uh, another one, Sanju Paul uh, created the smoke where the smoke is moving with everything. <laughs> he's mentioning that he's new to Blender. So, I mean, when I was new to Blender, I almost wasn't able to follow a donut tutorial. So I think you did really great. I mean, the effect is sort of abstract, but really cool. Great job. Keep it up, man. And yeah, I think I will be doing this every week. I mean, just uh, looking at the stuff that you 
send me guys uh, i think it's a nice community effort kind of to keep this channel alive so again if you would like to have your work featured in the next episode link for my twitter is in the description if you manage to make something creative out of my tutorials feel free to share with us and that would be it bye bye